TDs, including Mary Lou MacDonald and Catherine Murphy, tied yellow ribbons on Leinster House today in support of Margareta Darcy. Now, Margareta Darcy is in Limerick Prison because she has refused, essentially, to sign a, a bond uh, saying she will stay away from Shannon Airport because she is an activist and uh, she is trespass has trespassed on the runway at Shannon because, obviously, uh, the whole issue of rendition is something that she feels very strongly about. I'm joined by Andy Storey, a lecturer at UCD and chairman of AFRI. Andy, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Who are AFRI? AFRI is a small justice and human rights non-governmental organisation. Uh, we support actions such as Margareta's and we seek to promote justice for people in other parts of the world and that would include the people in Afghanistan and Iraq who are on the receiving end of the munitions of people being shipped through Shannon Airport that Margareta is protesting about. All right. Now, the, the first thing I'd like to tackle is, of course, the fact is she is 79. And she also, I understand, has uh, Parkinson's disease and cancer. You yeah. would agree, I presume, that age and illness are not a justification under the law. Oh, no, and I don't think Margaret herself yeah. would, would for one moment suggest that. Right. I do think, given her age, uh, it is unusual that she has been singled out in this way. I'm quite sure there are a large number of unserved uh, summonses in this country, and there are people who have not signed bonds to keep the peace, but no. they haven't been dragged out of their beds in the early hours of the morning and taken off to Limerick Prison. No, so no. I think there is an element of vindictiveness about the way right. she's been treated, but she herself well, I'll get would not back to vindictiveness in a minute, Andy, if I may. Um, the thing is, usually, the, what, what makes this case not unusual, but uh, under normal circumstances, I would have thought a judge would say, you know, I'm not going to put this old lady who's ill, I'm not going to put her in jail for three months. The reason he, he did it, one presumes, is because she wouldn't sign the bond saying she wouldn't protest. So if he, if the judge didn't do something tomorrow, next week, next month, Margaret will be back on the runway at Shannon. Isn't that right? I think she would. And I think she would, uh, I don't want to speak for Margareta, but I'm sure that she would feel that she is in fact not breaking the law. And she would subscribe, I think, to the principles enunciated back as far as Nuremberg in 1945 which stated that individual citizens of any country have international duties and responsibilities that transcend national and domestic obligations of obedience to local law, like trespassing at an airport. And that may sound like an abstract principle, but it has actually, George, been upheld by the Irish courts. Back in 2003, you may remember, some Catholic worker peace activists disabled a US war plane at Shannon Airport. And in 2006, their defence of lawful excuse that they were upholding international law was vindicated, an Irish jury acquitted them of all charges. So there is a precedent for Margaret's okay. action that she is acting out of a higher and just cause. There was another lady, and you're an expert in this, I'm not, who I think took a hammer to an airplane. She or did, something. Mary but Kelly, yes. Yeah, but she might have finished up in jail, I think, did she? In, but in fact, again, her conviction, well, she was convicted, but she, her conviction was overturned by the Court of Appeal in 2011. So again, there are precedents here in terms of okay. the action that Margareta had taken to highlight. And I, I think it's very important for your listeners to know, George, Passenger safety was in no way endangered. I was about to ask that question. Do explain that to me, why passenger safety wasn't in they danger. Were, they were not making any secret of their actions. They were not covertly trying to trespass onto the runway. They were making it very clear to the authorities that they were doing this and providing the authorities with plenty of time to make alternative arrangements to land planes on other runways or whatever needed to be done. So there was no question that passenger safety was in any way being endangered. They were symbolically, as it were, trying to highlight the fact that laws are routinely being broken at Shannon Airport. We know from Amnesty International and by human rights groups that uh, flights associated with extraordinary rendition, kidnap and torture have transited through Shannon Airport. And we know that the US, the Irish government, rather, is, is refusing to search uh, planes at Shannon Airport, either pursuant on charges of rendition no. or because they're carrying illegal munitions. So the Irish government is, in fact, breaking the law in a number of ways. It, it's breaking aviation law, for one, uh, in terms of possible transport of explosives. It's also violating principles of Irish neutrality. 
Now, well, you, may, you may not agree with Irish neutrality, George. I happen to do so. But it is enshrined in our constitution. <laughs> and the government is driving a coach and horses through it. No, I, I, I mean, it's not a question of agreeing or not. If we are neutral, we are neutral. It, uh, you know, yeah. and once you're neutral or not neutral, uh, then either position imposes certain restrictions and responsibilities upon you um, and we're neutral so therefore we have certain responsibilities now it was under Bertie Ahern uh, that I remember first this rendition and I remember talking to the American ambassador at that time who interestingly gave me an assurance on the program uh, that you know there weren't people manacled uh, going through uh, uh, Shannon Airport but here's my point the change in government hasn't made any change to our attitude to planes uh, going through Shannon Airport is that right? Tragically no it has not it has made no difference whatever despite the fact that the Labour Party in opposition did pledge that they would reverse this policy or at least uh, agree to the inspection of planes. Yeah, and they I, have now, of course, that it's one of many promises they've betrayed. Yes, well, I, I, I was about to say that I remembered the opposition being on a hot, very high horse <laughs> at that time, and I wondered uh, what, what had happened when they got in. Now, the issue of passenger safety, um, like you're saying it isn't, but she is on a runway, and planes land on runways. Yes, but she's on a runway in a completely pre announced public way uh, so it's not it's not a, a credible threat to passenger safety and I think that that's been thrown out there by people who are trying to discredit her and I don't think that's been you know, she's a campaigner for peace she's been a campaigner for human rights and peace all her life she's not interested in hurting people or, or in any way discommoding people she's trying to uphold the rights of people who's, who, who's, whose rights are being violated in far away places and for whom she is standing up well I mean the uh uh, people who are uh, concerned about Margaret's act do believe, they believe, um, that uh, that it does endanger travellers. That's their view, and I think you've covered it, and I'm going to leave it there. But um, it, it, the issue, and I agree with people who say, and I don't think you're making the point either, that age or illness, if it doesn't prevent or protesting, it shouldn't present prevent her serving a sentence for breaking the law. Uh, I, I, I don't think if she was on this program, I don't think she'd agree with you, uh, she would disagree with you at all except that she would make the argument that she is not breaking the law. She would make the argument that she is upholding the law and that it is the authorities who are breaking the law on a much wider scale. And I do just want to go back to this point about her being singled out because I think she has been and I'm not making the age uh, clemency argument, if you like. But I think it, it fits into the political culture of this country, whereby people who seek to hold the state to account for their abuses are themselves singled out for punishment. And we've seen this with the Garda whistleblower cases recently, where Garda whistleblowers who have said this system is rotten, the state is behaving wrongly, the Garda are behaving wrongly, they are the ones who are victimised, marginalised, bullied. Uh, and I, you can see the same pattern with Margareta. So rather than actually tackle the systemic crime with, in which we are implicated, the, uh, the the message that is sent out is, well, let's shoot the messenger. Uh, let's take action against the 79-year-old well, right. woman who is, who is telling us that we should uphold international humanitarian law. Okay, but you've, you've, you've talked about um, extraordinary rendition. You've also talked about explosives and so on. Given that the planes aren't actually inspected, how do we know what's on the planes? Well, we don't know for sure that there are explosives on the plane. We have very, very strong circumstantial evidence around rendition and there are Council of Europe, Amnesty International, Shannon Watch and various other reports that have been, European Parliament reports that have been compiled on this issue. We know that certain planes did transport uh, certain people. Uh, we know that they were involved in those transports and we know that those planes stopped at Shannon. So we don't know for sure that the individuals been suffering rendition were on those planes at that point in time, but the circumstantial evidence is extremely strong, at least strong enough to establish a prima facie case 
to play an inspection. Well, if, I'm not sure about this neutrality thing, because of course there isn't a war going on. It's just that we're not, we are not part of a military alliance. So, in, isn't that right? Well, I think that's a very that's the way the government chooses to define neutrality. Now, that's a very narrow definition of neutrality. And by the way, I think people in Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan and Yemen would probably disagree with your statement that there isn't a war going on. I think there is a war going on. And but we we're not. Well, we are providing material support to that war. We are streamlining that war. We're making it easier for, for people and weapons to be transported to those theatres of war. So we are, in fact, de facto supporting a war. If you look at the Irish Constitution, it doesn't define neutrality in terms of um, uh, in terms of a narrow military alliance. It defines it in terms of, for example, commitment to the Pacific resolution of international disputes. Now, clearly, the way in which Shannon is being used is not fulfilling that constitutional obligation. And the Irish government, successive Irish government, are in violation. All right. But, uh, but, okay, okay, just before you go, because this neutrality thing bothers me, right? Um, we were neutral in World War Two, so we were very happy that, that British and American soldiers would die so that, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd live in freedom. Um, but we weren't going to do anything about it. But we had a, a positive approach to neutrality. So we invariably sent downed flyers or whatever. We sent them back to England if they were allied. But if they were Germans, we kept them. So, uh, so it, this new, because we felt we were, we were on the side of the angels, if you like. So who's to say that we're not on the side of the angels here uh, in a battle against uh, world terrorism, which would happily blow us up if we got half a chance. Well, it's much more likely to blow us up because we're allowing part of our territory to be used as an aircraft carrier for the US war machine. I don't think we're on the side of the good guys here, George. There's over 2 million dead in Iraq alone since an illegal invasion was launched back in the early 2000s. There are, to this day, people, children, women and children, being whole families being murdered by drone attacks in Yemen, Pakistan and Afghanistan. This is not good guy stuff. I had the great privilege, George, to be in Wales two weeks ago visiting the family of Chelsea, formerly Bradley Manning, the US whistleblower, who revealed the, the atrocities being committed by US forces, including a horrifying video footage of a machine gun from a helicopter slaughtering a whole family in Iraq while US soldiers doing the firing whooped and cheered. These are not the good guys, George. All right, well, that's a view. But, sorry, just finally, uh, 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 Margaret Joyce has got three months, but, I mean, if she doesn't sign a bond on good behaviour, doesn't she have to go back until such time she, she sends a bond? No, it's not, it's not quite the same as a contempt of court order, right, George. Yeah. In the sense that if she, once she serves the sentence, she is she is free to go. And now, if she were to repeat the offence, she would be tried again. By the way, just one quick plug at the end. There is a protest at Shannon Airport in solidarity with her at 2 p.m. this Sunday. All right, Andy Storer, lecturer at uh, UCD, chairman of AFRI, who will be at uh, Shannon Airport at 2 o'clock on Sunday with...